Hi everybody, this is a live severe weather briefing on the threat of mothership supercells across the northern high plains. Looks like far southeastern Saskatchewan uh, has potential and across central Montana as well uh, where those uh, temperature dew point spreads are going to be pushing 30 degrees up there. So those are going to be more of the high base mothership supercell variety. But then down here, uh, the far northeastern corner of Wyoming, just to the west side of the Black Hills down into the uh, southwestern corner uh, of South Dakota, maybe even into the northwestern corner of Nebraska. Uh, there is a little bit of a pipe of low to even mid 60s up there that could bring those temperature dew point spreads down to about 25, 26 degrees, uh, which would be marginally supportive of low enough cloud bases for even a tornado threat there. And the Storm Prediction Center does have a 2% risk area uh, that far north. There's likely going to be supercells further south over east central, southeastern Wyoming into the Nebraska Panhandle as well, but the upper level flow is just a little bit weaker. And uh, this is a textbook northwesterly flow uh, type of an event. You can definitely see it's a ridge runner. Uh, the core of that ridge is uh, located over the Four Corners region. And uh, here you can see this anti-cyclone right here. And we are watching for these disturbances to ride up and over the top of this ridge or even strong enough vorticity maxima uh, that they can turn into a a little bit deeper of a short wave and then even suppress or break down this ridge a little bit and uh, that's what's going to happen on saturday when a more significant wave uh, passes uh, over this ridge off to the southeast and then it looks like maybe even a slower arrival of that jet street could be more of a central nebraska target maybe even up into cherry county nebraska potentially and it looks like that cap uh, might even hold across eastern nebraska into uh, western iowa there but that's my target area for today and uh, Gizmo right now is getting a spa treatment, uh, so I'm just waiting uh, for her to be finished up uh, with her new haircut, which we have had scheduled for a little while. And then uh, we're going to be heading north toward the Newcastle, Wyoming area, maybe even Lusk as well. And uh, this is the 0-3 to three kilometer EHI to kind of pick out those general target areas first. You can see southeastern Alberta would be in play up there as well. There was a couple tornado warnings up into southeastern Alberta, passing into northern Montana yesterday. But you can see pretty decent 0-3 to three kilometer EHIs there all the way up uh, through central Montana, uh, northwest of Billings quite a ways. But you can definitely see that streamer of slightly deeper moisture funneling south of the Black Hills right there up toward the Newcastle area. And I do think that that uh, area definitely shows uh, the best forecast sounding, slightly deeper moisture. Here you've only got 23 degree dew point spreads. Uh, so actually, this is a pretty decent sounding as well uh, into central Montana. Slight weaknesses up between 850 uh, and 700 millibars. But when you have a southeasterly storm motion turning into those southerly winds, and you can definitely amplify those magnitudes of the southwesterlies by that southeasterly storm motion. And a pretty decent hodograph, too, you can see there right below my head. Uh, you've got uh, basically uh, easter, easter, uh, southeast, uh, relatively weak wind at about 10 knots. Your weakness there at one kilometer, about 20 knots. But because your three, four, five, six kilometer winds are out of the northwest, uh, it brings that storm motion down into that bottom right quadrant, uh, south, southeast storm motions at about 20 knots. And that's able to squeeze out about 300, zero to three kilometer storm relative helicity, slightly lower, uh, zero to one uh, helicity there as well. But let's take a uh, sounding right in the middle of that streamer of moisture coming in just on the south side of the black hills and even though you have a relatively weaker low level winds with these easterlies uh your storm motion is almost due south at 20 knots and that squeezes out about 100 zero to one kilometer shear uh, uh also in excess of 300 though uh, zero to one kilometer shear so that's also quite a decent sounding and uh, that's why we do have that two percent tornado threat up there near newcastle your temperature dew point spreads are a little bit lower within that pipe of moisture at 78 over 60, a little bit closer to uh, 18 to, uh, to 20 degree dew point spreads. So if you can get some storms to develop in that environment, they will have tornado potential. But the RAP model is showing quite a bit of convective inhibition up in that target area. And the three kilometer NAM looks like you're probably going to have two to three supercells forming within uh, this environment here across eastern Wyoming up toward Newcastle. You could definitely see a streamer of zero to three kilometer vorticity and instability there, uh, streaming uh, just to the south or the west side of the Black Hills up toward the Newcastle area. Also near Lusk into the northwestern corner of the Nebraska Panhandle, uh, you do have those 25 degree dew point spreads, but those should come down a little bit as you get closer to zero Z and a little bit closer to sunset, seven or 8 p.m. Uh, so those uh, dominant mesocyclones still will have a chance uh, to produce some tornadoes. And I've seen a lot of tornadoes 
up in eastern Wyoming with uh, 25 degree dew point spreads. That's nothing across the northern high plains to generate a tornado threat. And you have these really nice hodographs up there favoring uh, southeast or south southeast or especially a dew southerly storm motion. Uh, bringing that critical angle a little bit closer to that 90 degrees uh, there that, that we're seeing. And uh, all of this, again, is uh, fueled by that relatively strong northwest flow just riding over top that ridge. Sometimes, though, if you don't get enough surface heating, uh, this anticyclonic curvature loft here can limit your storm coverage. And not all of the models agree on uh, convective initiation here across northeastern Wyoming. Uh, this is, of course, by uh, 18Z, no storms then. But by 22Z, which is 4 p.m. mountain time, you get initiation of those storms within that streamer of 0 to 3 kilometer instability and vorticity. Uh, you also get another uh, one developing just to the east of Lusk uh, there as well at about 22Z. So that's about 4 p.m. Uh, the 3 kilometer NAM definitely does have a couple of supercell storms moving due south or south southeast uh, into the northwestern corner of the Nebraska Panhandle. I'm sure Dan Fitz is going to be all over this thing. And these also could be producing very large hail. Uh, there. This is in a climatological max for hail. Some of the biggest hail I've ever seen in my storm chasing career uh, is in uh, this area. Plenty of instability as well and uh, late season moisture up here uh, streaming in uh, for those storms. Uh, they do tend to weaken a little bit at 0Z as that convective inhibition kind of dominates these storms a little bit. So by 6 to 7 p.m. you'll probably have some evaporating mothership supercells shrinking from that cap uh, but very smooth uh, pancake stacks as well. And then look at those storms uh, coming out of Montana near the Billings area, also further northwest of there. Uh, definitely the potential of those mothership supercells lined up uh, throughout central Montana and even up into the southeastern corner of uh, Alberta and the so far southwestern Saskatchewan as well. Uh, so these storms definitely could, could even pack a, a tornado threat uh, there, but these dew points are into the 50s, so not as ideal this uh, late season. You really need these uh, 60 dew points, like what you're getting further to the southeast across far northeastern Wyoming. And also uh, into uh, the northwestern Nebraska Panhandle. You can see this little streamer of moisture going right through the Black Hills, uh, up toward uh, the Newcastle area, even streaming up into the broadest area, up into southeastern Montana there, where there could uh, certainly be some supercell storms. But to look at kind of the uncontaminated uh, moisture gradient here. You do have a little streamer coming up into the Lusk area as well, according to the three kilometer NAM, a little bit further south. But for the most part, uh, those dew points mix out a bit, except for uh, banks right up against uh, the Black Hills. Uh, you do have a streamer of moisture that's able to also migrate up through the Sundance uh, area, up toward, uh, down toward Newcastle as well. Uh, some decent uh, dew points hanging on there. And uh, watch what the HRRR does to dew points. Well, it actually has a decent little stream here to the north of the Black Hills, up toward Broadus. Uh, definitely mixes out dew points to the southwest of the Black Hills from Newcastle down into the southwestern corner of South Dakota. And definitely maintains that deeper moisture to the north of the Black Hills there. But there's uh, definitely no way that the uh, HRRR, well, it still fires storms within that well-mixed air down near Newcastle to Lusk. But it's kind of right for the wrong reasons there, firing these storms, but over mixing those two points down into the 40s. Uh, but as is often the case of the HRRR, uh, many times it can be right for the wrong reasons and fires those storms within an environment uh, characterized by upper 40s dew points. Those are gonna be too high based to produce tornadoes if the uh, HRRR is accurate and then it maintains a capping inversion off to the north of that as well. So, uh, and then it really mixes out those dew points across central Montana which we'll have to take a look at the surface map. Uh, those OBS, there was a, a bit of an outage a little bit earlier, but even the, uh, uh, the low resolution NAM has a little streamer of moisture down up toward the Lusk area for the northwestern corner of the Nebraska Panhandle. Also has those better dew points near the Black Hills and to the north of the Black Hills there. And you can see that little blob of decent cape across that zone of near 60 dew points, temperatures into the mid 80s. They'll definitely have to get into the mid 80s to fire these storms. And then at about uh, zero Z after peak heating, you get a rapid building in of, uh, of convective inhibition. We can look at the mixed layer sim here. A big capping inversion, definitely long and to the northeast of the Black Hills, but it does seem to break uh, southwest side of the Black Hills, Newcastle, 
southwestern corner of South Dakota to far northwestern Nebraska Panhandle. A decent area there uh, where you might be able to squeeze out even a tornado. I like to use the zero to three kilometer shear indices when breaking down the high plains because a lot of times, just based on how these high plane setups are, you get these easterlies through at least a kilometer in the low levels, and then at about three kilometers, you flip over to westerly winds, in this case, west northwesterly winds. So, really, it takes uh, the zero to three kilometer storm relative felicity to accurately represent uh, the low level wind shear uh, available to these storms in the high plains, as you often have these easterly unidirectional winds in the lowest couple of kilometers before flipping around, even you know, with these uh, northwesterly flow setups as well. But decent shape totographs there. Uh, you are pushing a, a little bit higher in the way of uh, temperature dew point spreads, a little closer to 30 there, uh, but there likely is going to be a narrow window near zero Z uh, where there certainly could be a tornado threat, even back toward Billings as well. Uh, you're talking about uh, 35 degree temperature dew point spread, so a little bit higher cloud bases up into Montana. Beautiful structure up there, though. Uh, certainly that, that's going to be uh, the case up there. Just an incredible uh, mothership structure. And there is a tornado watch right now in southeastern Georgia that I do want to break down, and that's uh, uh, associated with uh, Tropical Storm Elsa that is lifting off to the northeast here, uh, mainly stratiform rain. I have seen a couple of uh, tornado warnings so far this morning, uh, mainly in these convective bands off to the south. Uh, you do have a little cluster of uh, storms developing uh, to the west of Savannah uh, right now that could also uh, be interesting, uh, but we'll take a look at the environment as well down there uh, for that tornado watch. Tropical Storm Elsa made landfall just to the north of Cedar Key this morning, a little bit further west as a relatively weak storm. Uh, that convective surge that we were watching uh, there for so much time, so, uh, a stubborn convective burst just on the north side of the center that we were watching yesterday, completely collapsed as I was doing a podcast uh, for those uh, young weather enthusiasts coming up. Uh, definitely I always enjoy doing those podcasts and helping them uh, get eyes on their work. Uh, but uh, I was doing that podcast and over a two hour period, uh, the uh, convective core there uh, near uh, Elsa completely collapsed. Outflow boundaries getting sent everywhere. You can see them all over on radar, just like a giant storm that completely collapsed and sends out outflow, almost like a microburst. And uh, definitely with all those uh, outflow boundaries getting sent everywhere, definitely was a sign that it ran into some dry air. Uh, some shear caused a dry air intrusion into the, that southwestern portion of the eye. And once the integrity of that eye uh, dissipated uh, in less than an hour uh, that storm went from being a hurricane to uh, a much more minimal tropical cyclone of course the winds took a little bit longer to spin down but by 21 z about 4 or 5 p.m you can see that shear associated with the front right, right quadrant there in far northeastern florida uh, and that area is uh, a lot more favorable uh, today for tornadoes uh, down there in southeastern georgia than we had yesterday across the majority of the florida peninsula and the wrap definitely has four, three or four or five supercell storms developing in an arc on uh, that eastern quadrant, propagating up to the front right quadrant there within an environment of about 200, zero to one kilometer storm relative felicity. And some decent surface base instability too uh, is uh, developing here on the outer fringes, especially of that, those rain bands uh, associated with uh, that tropical storm. And we can take a look at the radar here, but first I want to go back to our original target area up there across the northern plains and discuss the RAP model, which has a lot of uh, convective inhibition uh, right uh, overlaid uh, with that deeper moisture, at least along and to the north of the Black Hills. But you definitely do have surface space instability building a little bit further south of that moisture gradient. But you can certainly see that line right there near the Newcastle area, a pretty sharp gradient to that moisture. And the RAP definitely holds on uh, to that moisture into that far northeastern corner of Wyoming. But then it builds in that rapid convective, uh, convective inhibition. That's the blue color there, negative cape in the low levels, and rapidly builds that in uh, at about 0 Z, so about 6 p.m. mountain time. Suddenly you get this low-level stable layer that develops so that will either uh, cause these to be very photogenic motherships within the east-northeasterly winds there back toward Gillette uh, to Newcastle down to Lusk. Or a supercell could evolve into this environment and then develop such a strong mesocyclone that it's still able to drill uh, through that layer. Uh, but the, the wrap shows that there's not going to be much in the way of a supercell initiation uh, in that target area. You do have a lot of convective, uh, a, a lot of surface space instability into southeastern uh, Alberta uh, that's building through the afternoon. 
Uh, Mark should definitely be chasing up there. The winds do veer just a little bit in southeastern Alberta. A little bit more backed down into the far southwestern corner of Saskatchewan. But then look at that big belt of easterlies down uh, throughout central Montana, uh, contributing to substantial bulk cheer for these northwesterly movers. Uh, basically an outbreak of these high-based mothership supercells across central Montana, dropping big hail. Probably not any tornadoes uh, into central Montana, but there is a tornado threat further southeast toward Newcastle and to the south side of the Black Hills down there. If uh, that moisture can hang on and you don't get, and, and if the wrap is overdoing that convective inhibition streaming into that target area, then I do think there's a decent chance of tornadoes and uh, even a uh, uh, definitely baseball size hail. Gorilla hail is going to be a, a certainty if those storms do form. But if the wrap is right, then that convective inhibition builds in quite rapidly at about 6 p.m. Uh, that anticyclonic uh, curvature loft will just have a little bit too much subsidence uh, to develop uh, those storms, but we'll just have to see. So here is the uh, the, the tornado watch is in effect for this area, and I'm watching these uh, embedded supercells right here over far southeastern Georgia down to the Jacksonville area. You can definitely see these embedded supercell structures within there, feeding off of that significant wind shear, two to three hundred, zero to one kilometer storm relative felicity. Not a ton of surface-based uh, instability here within this rain shield. You have a lot of stratiform rain uh, happening through throughout uh, the uh, core of this tropical cyclone, uh, which is re relatively sheared as it's getting picked up uh, by the southwesterly winds out ahead of an upper level low. Uh, but as these storms migrate to the north, with that much low-level wind shear, you really don't require much in the way of surface-based instability. So as these lift off to the northeast, I do think we're going to see a couple of tornado warnings. Uh, probably over the southeastern corner of Georgia, maybe even lifting up uh, with that uh, dominant rain band. But I'm definitely watching these threats of renegades. You can see them out over the open ocean right now, uh, out ahead of this, uh, out ahead of that uh, uh, stratiform rain shield there. And that's the area that we were watching yesterday uh, for the development and evolution of these supercell storms. This cluster uh, tried to go surface base there, right out of the gate to the south of Savannah. Uh, but these have become a little bit elevated of it as they've gone uh, inland into southeastern Georgia. These are the next ones, though. And I do think that these will have the potential of uh, producing a tornado or two uh, as they get a little bit closer to Savannah there and the border of uh, Georgia and South Carolina just off to the north. Definitely need to keep an eye on uh, those clusters of renegades that are uh, able to evolve next to that stratiform rain shield. But definitely this is a dominant convective band of this entire tropical cyclone, just ahead of the dry punch, wrapping around the south side of this tropical storm, definitely creating quite a big convective band. And uh, it is a little bit concerning seeing some of these embedded supercell structures within there. You can see that little wavy nature, a little bean right there, bean shape, bean shape here, bean there. But you can definitely see these embedded supercell structures within this convective band that signify that th this is a very strongly sheared environment, but it is lacking a little bit in the surface base instability uh, to have those all producing tornadoes. If you didn't have as much rain and this uh, dry punch was a lot more progressive and it was able to clear out that environment around these storms, I need to be talking about numerous tornado warnings with this, but these uh, tropical cyclone tornado events are definitely a little bit complicated uh, to forecast here, but I'm watching that cluster of renegades there uh, to the southeast of Savannah, moving off to the northwest. Uh, that certainly when it starts to interact with the friction of the earth here and a little bit more daytime heating out ahead of this stratiform rain band, uh, then these things may have just enough surface base instability to uh, produce uh, potential tornadoes. But it looks like I haven't even had the uh, app up here, so let's do that right now. Happens to me all the time here. I'll redo it, don't worry. Don't fret. So this is the uh, tropical cyclone. I can loop this uh, 21 frames here. And it made landfall over Cedar Key, continues to spin uh, over South Central Georgia uh, right now. And you can see this pretty large uh, stratiform rain, heavy tropical rains happening there. You can definitely see uh, some of these renegades trying to evolve out ahead of this stratiform rain right there. Uh, these clusters of supercells that are lifting off to the northwest uh, just downstream of Savannah are definitely of interest there. 
Uh, looks like there could have been quite a bit more heating uh, located out ahead of that stratiform rain band there as well. So looking at Jacksonville radar, this is the dominant convective band with uh, Tropical Storm Elsa here. And you can see these little embedded supercell structures within there, these little bean shapes. Uh, those are little embedded supercell structures, and that shows the strong wind shear that these are moving into, 2 to 300, 0 to 1 kilometer storm relative helicity. And they are definitely lacking in terms of low-level cape because of all of that rain that surrounds them. Uh, but you can see an embedded supercell structure right there just in the south of Callahan. None of these are worn, and uh, they are ahead of this dry slot that is uh, wrapping around the southeast side of this tropical cyclone just ahead of that dry punch and a little bit too far ahead of it uh, is that are, are those uh, is that dominant convective band there with some uh, supercell structures and better within if this dry slot were a little bit more progressive and overspread these supercell storms uh, then these would have a more robust tornado potential as they'd be able to tap into some of that surface base instability but there's also this rain band that extends down into northeastern florida uh, i'm not seeing anything with an immediate tornado threat there but down southeast of Savannah, these are definitely something to watch. These have a potential of maturing into supercell storms once they start crossing in and interacting with the friction of the earth here across uh, eastern Georgia, southeastern South Carolina there. Uh, as these that move off to the northwest, they will have a potential uh, of developing tornadoes. And that's how we do have a tornado watch. But once again, most of the strong wind shear is focused a little bit closer to the uh, tropical cyclone in this area is dominated uh, by this heavy tropical rain here that definitely leads, leads to some surface-based stability, not instability. And that's a reason why uh, this tropical storm, Elsa, has not been a very prolific tornado producer. But we got to keep an eye on this uh, rain, this convective band, southeastern Georgia into northeastern Florida, and then also this renegade off to the southeast of uh, Savannah uh, certainly could be two areas of interest. So I'm going to go take a, a check on Gizmo here really quick uh, to make sure that she's doing okay. Uh, but the target area today, uh, definitely that um, zone there, stretching from the far southeastern corner of uh, Alberta and uh, all the way down into that northeastern corner of Wyoming where there's a little bit deeper moisture, a little bit better chance of a tornado. So if Gizmo gets done here in the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to head out up toward Newcastle, Lusk, Wyoming, and chase these high-based supercells. Uh, I've also got Connor, uh, the number one ranked storm chaser in the world, that's coming out here to visit me. And uh, we may chase Friday together in uh, western into central Nebraska. That system continues to slow down a little bit, uh, but right now targeting central Nebraska, maybe up back toward Cherry County for southeasterly movers there. Uh, so I'll definitely keep a close eye on those as well. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in to all my live weather reports yesterday during ELSA coverage. And I'm going to be back out in the field, it looks like, later this afternoon or at least on Friday uh, for the western and central Nebraska target. Thanks, everybody, and have a great rest of your Wednesday. Never stop chasing.